Hello and welcome, my friends. Welcome to another episode of My Daily Manor. I'm here with Pastor Franklin Nicholas, the founder and president of Acts of Kindness Mission Ministry. And our goal with this with this daily series is to help you in your devotional walk with God. We believe that the most important thing we can do as a Christian is to spend time with God daily and hear from the living God who wants to speak to us on a daily basis. So in this Bible reading, we encourage you to take your Bible right? Open your Bibles, and we're going to spend time in the Word of God, studying, meditating on Scripture so that God can speak to us. So we'll ask that Pastor Nicholas open us with a word of prayer. Let's bow our heads. Dear loving Father, we thank you for the opportunity of calling upon your name at this hour. Be divinely close to us and help us to study your words. Our, our hearts will be open and our minds will be set to follow you. Grant us peace, wisdom, and understanding as we study your words. It's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so at this time, I'm going to share my screen, right? We go for the devotional and the Bible reading together, and we ask again that you take your Bible with you, be it on your phone or a physical Bible, and you follow along with us as we do the Bible reading for today. Today is the 19th day of June. Welcome to the Daily Audio Bible. I am Brian. It is wonderful to be here with you today from the lush rolling hills of Tennessee. And excited, excited that we're here around the global campfire. Excited for our next step forward. And that next step leads us back to where we left off and that happens to at this point be in the book of first kings where we are moving chronologically through all of the different leaders of the nation of israel and the nation of judah or the kingdom of israel and the kingdom of judah the northern and southern kingdoms today we'll read first kings chapter 20 and 21. King ben of Syria gathered all his troops, and supported by 32 other rulers with their horses and chariots, he marched up, laid siege to Samaria, and launched attacks against it. He sent messengers into the city to King Ahab of Israel to say, King ben demands that you surrender to him your silver and gold, your women, and the strongest of your children. Tell my lord King Ben-Hadad that I agree. He can have me and everything I own, Ahab answered. Later, the messengers came back to Ahab with another demand from Ben-Hadad. I sent you word that you were to hand over to me your silver and gold, your women and your children. Now, however, I will send my officers to search your palace and the homes of your officials and take everything they consider valuable. They will be there about this time tomorrow. King Ahab called in all the leaders of the country and said, You see that this man wants to ruin us. He sent me a message demanding my wives and children, my silver and gold, and I agreed. The leaders and the people answered, Don't pay any attention to him. Don't give in. So Ahab replied to ben messengers, Tell my lord the king that I agreed to his first demand, but I cannot agree to the second. The messengers left and then returned with another message from ben -Hadad. I will bring enough men to destroy this city of yours and carry off the rubble in their hands. May the gods strike me dead if I don't. King Ahab answered, Tell King ben that a real soldier does his bragging after a battle not before it. ben received Ahab's answer as he and his allies, the other rulers, were drinking in their tents. He ordered his men to get ready to attack the city, and so they moved into position. Meanwhile, a prophet went to King Ahab and said, The Lord says, Don't be afraid of that huge army. I will give you victory over it today, and you will know that I am the Lord. Who will lead the attack? Ahab asked. The prophet answered, The Lord says 
that the young soldiers under the command of the district governors are to do it. Who will command the main force? the king asked. You, the prophet answered. So the king called out the young soldiers who were under the district commanders, 232 in all. Then he called out the Israelite army, a total of 7,000 men. The attack began at noon, as ben and his 32 allies were getting drunk in their tents. The young soldiers advanced first. Scouts sent out by ben reported to him that a group of soldiers was coming out of Samaria. He ordered, Take them alive, no matter whether they are coming to fight or to ask for peace. The young soldiers led the attack, followed by the Israelite army, and each one killed the man he fought. The Syrians fled with the Israelites in hot pursuit, but ben escaped on horseback, accompanied by some of the cavalry. King Ahab took to the field, captured the horses and chariots, and inflicted a severe defeat on the Syrians. Then the prophet went to King Ahab and said, Go back and build up your forces and make careful plans, because the king of Syria will attack again next spring. King ben officials said to him, The gods of Israel are mountain gods, and that is why the Israelites defeated us. But we will certainly defeat them if we fight them in the plains. Now remove the 32 rulers from their commands and replace them with field commanders. Then call up an army as large as the one that deserted you, with the same number of horses and chariots. We will fight the Israelites in the plains, and this time we will defeat them. King ben agreed and followed their advice. The following spring he called up his men and marched with them to the city of Aphek to attack the Israelites. The Israelites were called up and equipped. They marched out and camped in two groups facing the Syrians. The Israelites looked like two small flocks of goats compared to the Syrians, who spread out over the countryside. A prophet went to King Ahab and said, This is what the Lord says. Because the Syrians say that I am a god of the hills and not of the plains, I will give you victory over their huge army, and you and your people will know that I am the Lord. For seven days the Syrians and the Israelites stayed in their camps facing each other. On the seventh day they started fighting, and the Israelites killed a hundred thousand Syrians. The survivors fled into the city of Aphek, where the city walls fell on 27,000 of them. ben also escaped into the city and took refuge in the back room of a house. His officials went to him and said, We have heard that the Israelite kings are merciful. Give us permission to go to the king of Israel with sackcloth around our waists and ropes around our necks, and maybe he will spare your life. So they wrapped sackcloth around their waists and ropes around their necks, went to Ahab and said, Your servant ben pleads with you for his life. Ahab answered, Is he still alive? Good. He's like a brother to me. ben officials were watching for a good sign, and when Ahab said brother, they took it up at once and said, As you say, ben is your brother. Bring him to me. Ahab ordered. When ben arrived, Ahab invited him to get in the chariot with him. ben said to him, I will restore to you the towns my father took from your father, and you may set up a commercial center for yourself in Damascus, just as my father did in Samaria. Ahab replied, On these terms, then, I will set you free. He made a treaty with him and let him go. At the Lord's command, a member of a group of prophets ordered a fellow prophet to hit him, but he refused. So he said to him, Because you have disobeyed the Lord's command, a lion will kill you as soon as you leave me. And as soon as he left, a lion came along and killed him. Then this same prophet went to another man and said, Hit me. This man did so. He hit him a hard blow and hurt him. The prophet bandaged his face with a cloth to disguise himself and went and stood by the road waiting for the king of Israel to pass. 
As the king was passing by, the prophet called out to him and said, Your Majesty, I was fighting in the battle when a soldier brought a captured enemy to me and said, Guard this man. If he escapes, you will pay for it with your life, or else pay a fine of 3,000 pieces of silver. But I got busy with other things, and the man escaped. The king answered, You have pronounced your own sentence, and you will have to pay the penalty. The prophet tore the cloth from his face, and at once the king recognized him as one of the prophets. The prophet then said to the king, This is the word of the Lord. Because you allowed the man to escape, whom I had ordered to be killed, you will pay for it with your life, and your army will be destroyed for letting his army escape. The king went back home to Samaria, worried and depressed. Near King Ahab's palace in Jezreel, there was a vineyard owned by a man named Naboth. One day Ahab said to Naboth, Let me have your vineyard. It is close to my palace, and I want to use the land for a vegetable garden. I will give you a better vineyard for it, or if you prefer, I will pay you a fair price. I inherited this vineyard from my ancestors, Naboth replied. The Lord forbid that I should let you have it. Ahab went home, depressed and angry over what Naboth had said to him. He lay down on his bed, facing the wall, and would not eat. His wife Jezebel went to him and asked, Why are you so depressed? Why won't you eat? He answered, Because of what Naboth said to me. I offered to buy his vineyard, or if he preferred, to give him another one for it, but he told me that I couldn't have it. Well, are you the king or aren't you? Jezebel replied. Get out of bed, cheer up and eat. I will get you Naboth's vineyard. Then she wrote some letters, signed Ahab's name to them, sealed them with his seal, and sent them to the officials and leading citizens of Jezreel. The letter said, Proclaim a day of fasting. Call the people together and give Naboth the place of honor. Get a couple of scoundrels to accuse him to his face of cursing God and the king. Then take him out of the city and stone him to death. The officials and leading citizens of Jezreel did what Jezebel had commanded. They proclaimed a day of fasting, called the people together, and gave Naboth the place of honor. The two scoundrels publicly accused him of cursing God and the king, and so he was taken outside the city and stoned to death. The message was sent to Jezebel. Naboth has been put to death. As soon as Jezebel received the message, she said to Ahab, Naboth is dead. Now go and take possession of the vineyard which he refused to sell you. At once Ahab went to the vineyard to take possession of it. Then the Lord said to Elijah, the prophet from Tishbe, Go to King Ahab of Samaria. You will find him in Naboth's vineyard about to take possession of it. Tell him that I, the Lord, say to him, after murdering the man, are you taking over his property as well? Tell him that this is what I say. In the very place that the dogs licked up Naboth's blood, they will lick up your blood. When Ahab saw Elijah, he said, Have you caught up with me, my enemy? Yes, I have, Elijah answered. You have devoted yourself completely to doing what is wrong in the Lord's sight. So the Lord says to you, I will bring disaster on you. I will do away with you and get rid of every male in your family, young and old alike. Your family will become like the family of King Jeroboam, son of Nebat, and like the family of King Baasha, son of Ahijah, because you have stirred up my anger by leading Israel into sin. And concerning Jezebel, the Lord says that dogs will eat her body in the city of Jezreel. Any of your relatives who die in the city will be eaten by dogs, and any who die in the open country will be eaten by vultures. There was no one else who had devoted himself so completely to doing wrong in the Lord's sight as Ahab, all at the urging of his wife Jezebel. He committed the most shameful sins by worshipping idols, as the Amorites had done, whom the Lord had driven out of the land as the people of Israel advanced. 
When Elijah finished speaking, Ahab tore his clothes, took them off, and put on sackcloth. He refused food, slept in the sackcloth, and went about gloomy and depressed. The Lord said to the prophet Elijah, Have you noticed how Ahab has humbled himself before me? Since he has done this, I will not bring disaster on him during his lifetime. It will be during his son's lifetime that I will bring disaster on Ahab's family. Acts 12, 24 through 13, 15 Meanwhile, the word of God continued to spread and grow. Barnabas and Saul finished their mission and returned from Jerusalem, taking John Mark with them. In the church at Antioch, there were some prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, called the Black, Lucius from Cyrene, Menaean, who had been brought up with Governor Herod, and Saul. While they were serving the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said to them, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul to do the work to which I have called them. They fasted and prayed, placed their hands on them, and sent them off. Having been sent by the Holy Spirit, Barnabas and Saul went to Seleucia and sailed from there to the island of Cyprus. When they arrived at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues. They had John Mark with them to help in the work. They went all the way across the island to Paphos, where they met a certain magician named Bar-Jesus a Jew who claimed to be a prophet. He was a friend of the governor of the island, Sergius Paulus, who was an intelligent man. The governor called Barnabas and Saul before him because he wanted to hear the word of God. But they were opposed by the magician Elymas, that is his name in Greek, who tried to turn the governor away from the faith. And Saul, also known as Paul, was filled with the Holy Spirit, he looked straight at the magician and said, You son of the devil, you are the enemy of everything that is good. You are full of all kinds of evil tricks, and you always keep trying to turn the Lord's truths into lies. The Lord's hand will come down on you now. You will be blind and will not see the light of day for a time. At once, Alamis felt a dark mist cover his eyes and he walked around trying to find someone to lead him by the hand. When the governor saw what had happened, he believed, for he was greatly amazed at the teaching about the Lord. Paul and his companions sailed from Paphos and came to Perga, a city in Pamphylia, where John Mark left them and went back to Jerusalem. They went on from Perga and arrived in Antioch in Pisidia, and on the Sabbath they went into the synagogue and sat down. After the reading from the Law of Moses and from the writings of the prophets, the officials of the synagogue sent them a message. Friends, we want you to speak to the people if you have a message of encouragement for them. Psalm 137 A Lament of Israelites in Exile by the rivers of Babylon we sat down. There we wept when we remembered Zion. On the willows nearby we hung up our harps. Those who captured us told us to sing. They told us to entertain them. Sing us a song about Zion. How can we sing a song to the Lord in a foreign land? May I never be able to play the harp again if I forget you, Jerusalem. May I never be able to sing again if I do not remember you, if I do not think of you as my greatest joy. Remember, Lord, what the Edomites did the day Jerusalem was captured. Remember how they kept saying, tear it down to the ground. Babylon, you will be destroyed. Happy are those who pay you back for what you have done to us who take your babies and smash them against a rock. Proverbs 17, 16 
It does a fool no good to spend money on an education because he has no common sense. All right, friends. So this brings us to the end of our reading for today. Uh, we pray that you were blessed by the study and the reading of God's word and that God spoke to you individually as well. So at this time, we're going to get a few thoughts from Pastor Nicholas. Pastor, any thoughts on the reading, either from the Old or the New Testament? Yeah, it was pretty good. Wonderful reading. I enjoyed it. And I learned a lot from it today, this morning. God is on our side. Man. This is to say, once you recognize that God is on your side and he is for you, nothing will come against you. They will try. People will try to hurt you or try to say all kinds of evil things about you. But in the back of your mind, God is on my side. I will get through this. We have to be full of the Holy Spirit also. The Holy Spirit has to have dominion over our lives. Give the Holy Spirit control of your life and knowing that God is on your side. The thing I love, one of, one of the things I, I really enjoy when it says, God should be our greatest joy. Mm. <laughs> it said that in our reading, God himself mm. should be our greatest joy. It's a joy to know the Lord. It's a joy to be depending on God. It's a joy to know that God is on your side. No, that's so powerful you share that. And as you were talking there, I remember the part about Ahab yeah. when he obeyed God and he did what he humbled himself. Yes. And God was able to provide for him and bless him and help him defeat his enemies. Beautiful. But then as soon as he kind of got to a point where, okay, I have arrived and he, he was filled with self, then he turned his back on God and then we saw what happened then. There was calamity and then he kept on going along in that course of selfishness and doing his own will as opposed to God's will. Yeah. So true, though. God is not God is not just there for us in good times or in bad times. It's true. We have to try. He's always there. Mm. So we have to be focused on him in good times, focus on him in bad times also. He have made a mistake. When God blesses him, he turns his back. And we yeah. cannot afford to do this. The yeah. more we, the more God blesses is the more we should find joy in him. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what you're like. And that's the danger. Like oftentimes, you know, we 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 don't forget God when times are hard because you know we pray and we on our knees, oh Lord, bless me, please help me, save me from my enemies. But when things get good, when God blesses us, then we get you know get filled with self. That's that's the danger yeah. point. Is when we it are is. blessed it and is. delivered, that's when we tend to turn our back. Yeah, it's a good thing you say that though, because I can remember somewhere I saw what God intend to be a blessing to us. He gave it to us as a blessing, and that very same thing can turn into a curse. Yeah. Amen. Uh, it, it is. It's amazing yeah. how we can turn our backs on God when everything is going okay, and then when things are not going okay, we can come back to Him. Yes. Yeah. That's so <laughs> true. Yeah. yeah. It's sad. Um, it is. But thank you so much, Pastor. Any last thoughts or comments as we come to a close today? I enjoy this morning and we'll continue doing it. We'll continue enjoying every morning. We'll have a devotion like that for you. Please be part of it and be blessed from it. Amen. Thank you so much. Again, folks, this was brought to you by Acts of Kindness Mission Ministry. And we have here the pastor, this the founder and the president of this ministry. And Acts of Kindness is all over the world, building churches, for example, in Ghana right now. And the mission is to really spread the gospel in all the world by providing for the physical needs of people, thereby opening the way where we can also provide for the spiritual needs and lead people into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. So if you want to learn more about Acts of Kindness Mission Ministry, we'll put a link to the website in the description box below. So right below this video, you'll find a link where you can learn more about the ministry. And if you feel so impressed, hopefully partner with this ministry as well. So we thank you so much. We pray that you were blessed today by this episode and help and help you in your walk with God. Um, because we believe, like we said, that the most important thing we can do is to spend time daily with God because the transformation that we're looking for really comes through the scriptures and the Holy Spirit transforming our character. Beautiful. So again, thank you so much for being here. We look forward to seeing you on the next episode of My Daily Manner with Acts of Kindness Mission Ministry. Bye Beautiful. Beautiful.